No Tail. Known for being the foundation of some of the most successful Dota 2 teams and as competitive Dota's flower of positivity. Fans might remember him from his appearance in a whopping three True Sight documentaries. And of course, his two back-to-back -back wins at the International 2018 and 19. However, critics will be quick to point out the flaws in Notale's game, and question if his renown is really a product of his own ability or just the fortunate timing and excellence of his teammates. So after reviewing his entire competitive career, I'll pose the question, how good was Notale really? So as a clear way to judge, I'll be calculating the percent that no Tail, with any given roster, would place top 4 or better in any given tournament in a certain year. This will give us something that I'll call a high placement rate. And in this analysis, I'll be reviewing these years of competitive Dota 2. The Dota scene in 2012 was a volatile firestorm and still in shock of the possibilities that the first international a year prior had opened. And in this environment, no Tail began his competitive Dota 2 career as a member of Fnatic, alongside his former Heroes of New Earth teammates Fly, Nova, and Era. no Tail and the young Fnatic squad managed to qualify for 9 tournaments, placing top 4 in 5 of them, winning 3 of which. On top of the raw results, it should be highlighted that one of the tournament wins, the Thor Open 2012, was an upset over the soon-to-be legendary No Tidehunter roster, which would later go on to form Alliance and win the International 2013. Minus one player, of course. Overall, no Tail produced a 55% high placement rate. However, the relatively low number of tournaments in 2012 does skew this a little bit. But aside from that caveat, it's a solid start to a career. Alright, 2013. With the new year came a new slew of potential in the Dota scene. And it's really easy to see in no Tail's appearances and over triple the number of tournaments from the year before. Another year on Fnatic brought no Tail 34 tournaments, with 19 top 4 finishes and 3 significant wins among them. This doesn't include his top 8 finish at the International 2013, which is a respectable placement, but not what we're calling necessarily good for professional standards. This rounded no Tail up to a 59% high placement rate, a reasonable jump from his rate a year prior, especially when factoring in the increase in competition. 2013 was yet another solid year, but nothing legendary yet. Next up is 2014, with no Tail boasting 22 high tier tournament appearances and 15 top 4 spots. And a quick side note, the reason that there's less total events is likely because top players started playing in less and less tier 3 and tier 2 events. But with another disappointing placement at the International 2014, no Tail's time with Fnatic came to an end. And with the end of one story came another. That's right, Team Secret, the heavily anticipated powerhouse came onto the scene, with no Tail being announced as part of their roster. Despite his stint in Team Secret not lasting very long, no Tail and company netted a clean 5 out of 5 top 4 placements in the 5 events they appeared in. These results could mean a lot of things. A testament to no Tail's ability into a new squad maybe, or the synergy no Tail had with his longtime teammate Fly, or just the raw skill that the team possessed as a whole. In any case, no Tail ended the year with a 68% high placement rate, meaning that if no Tail was in a tournament, it was a good bet that he'd be at least in the semifinals. Statistically, aside from the international, 2014 was a pretty good year for no Tail. 2015 was a little different from the other years. It was a tale of two halves, mostly. At the start of 2015, no Tail had just left Team Secret for Team Cloud9 with high hopes. But the Cloud9 era brought about 7 high tier tournament appearances with 3 top 4 placings, producing a 43% high placement rate. Then came the second half of the story. After another disappointing placement at the International, no Tail set his sights on his next adventure, Monkey Business. In the Monkey Business era, another 7 high tier tournament qualifications arose, with a whopping 6 of them being top 4 finishes. One of which being Valve's first major, the Frankfurt Major, upsetting his former team and powerhouse, Team Secret. But people are quick to point out that this win and the others are likely heavily attributed to no Tail's new star player, Miracle. But when trying to determine how good a player is, it's important to include their ability in assessing new talent as well. So no Tail deserves his due credit here. Combining both the Cloud9 era and the Monkey Business era of the year, no Tail's high placement rate was 65%. But beyond just the placements, it's also important to factor in the struggles of being a fletchling organization and the pressure to perform fast or disband, making this high placement rate just more impressive, even with talent like Miracle. For the most part, the 2016 and 17 portion of Notel's career can generally be clumped together, comprising the first half of OG. 
The 2016 season contained 15 high-profile tournaments with a hefty 11 top 4 placements, including a set of major wins in Manila and Boston, shooting no tails of Valve event wins up to 3. 2017 saw similar success, with yet another major title at the Kiev Major, showing 9 top 4 spots in 15 tournaments. This gave him a 73 and 60% high placement rate for 2016 and 17, respectively. After two great years, the squad moved with high hopes and even higher expectations going into no Tail's fourth international, where the team crashed and burned, thus closing the book on the 2016 and 2017 domination OG had had. After that TI, no Tail's crew faced issues throughout the rest of 2017. Despite this, their placement rate is still very high, and compounded by the fact that many of these tournaments were premier majors with the highest possible competition, as opposed to the earlier year's surplus of tier 2 and tier 3 tournaments, the era of OG dominance likely speaks for itself. However, that asterisk of the international always loomed over no tail, especially then. Unfortunately, 2018 continued that story. The OG roster fell into a historic slump. Only appearing in 9 high profile events, the roster only managed to place top 4 in one tournament, and a tier 2 tournament at that. The team had already suffered the loss of their star mid after last year's TI performance, and now longtime teammate and friend Fly was announcing his departure from OG, and he was taking S4 with him. To No Tail and to the team, this was a betrayal. But again, No Tail's incredible ability to scout young talent emerged. Making quick fixes here and there to the team, No Tail added pup star Thompson and Ana to the roster proving invaluable. And you probably already know what happens next. The Cinderella story begins for OG. An incredible run through the EU TI qualifiers, and an utterly improbable win at the one true event. The clouds that loomed over no Tail over his entire career finally could be dispersed. And there's not much to be said that hasn't already been said. As is the nature of Dota, the international trumps everything, even the practically winless season they had. Compounded with Notel's mostly rookie roster and the loss of his longtime allies, it's easy to see why this was Notel's claim to legendary status and his finest hour. Or at least that's what I would say if 2019 didn't happen. Yep, presenting a shockingly similar story to 2018, Notel and company faced mild results in high profile events and was again faced with criticisms and the awful Fluke TI moniker. But if you follow the competitive Dota scene, you likely know how this story ends. Another international win, back to back, and again against tournament favorites. The story has been told a million times before and doesn't need me to reiterate it. To fans back then, and to fans now, it's incredible. So that's it, how good was No Tail really? You know, coming into this I wasn't really sure I'd be too impressed by his track record pre-OG. I, and I'm sure many others, vaguely remember hearing about him in the years prior to Secret as a good player but nothing to write home about. And even after watching his insane run at TI 2018, and in the majors, us critics retorted that it could have just been the help of some insane talent over the years. But truly, no. Undoubtedly, no Tail is an incredible player. He's been game-defining in every sense of the phrase. Competitive Dota is a turbulent and risky road, and it's no easy task to walk, and being successful throughout an entire career is even harder. If we consider a successful player to be able to have at least a 50% chance to place top 4 in any given tournament that they're in, and if we consider the international the ultimate victory in Dota, then Notale has been statistically successful in every year of his career. Notale is without a doubt among the best of them. Whoa, it's the end of the video, and this took me way more time than I thought it would. I had an absolute blast making this. I'll be making more of these sorts of history of videos, so stick around.